Welcome, fair people of YouTube. Today I bring you the fourth episode of the Seven Piece series of our review and analysis of the pre-build decks that will come out soon. Actually in five days, that's amazing. Can't wait, alright, but anyway, in this episode we'll cover the Dragon deck, Aura of the Water Worm. If this is your first uh, video of this kind that you are watching on my channel, uh, I will just quickly say that we are reviewing the deck. Usually we were playing the game, but... Uh, yeah, right now we won't be playing the game because I actually did some tests with these decks and uh, I couldn't win, alright? I literally had 0% win rate, so... I think it's kind of pointless to show you the gameplay of this deck because they are just not good standalone. This deck might actually be different, but still, again, I... I actually lack one card, I don't have Ouroboros, I never opened good legendaries for Dragon, so, and I'm not really interested in the class, I don't really like ramping, so, yeah, anyway, let's jump into it and see just how good the Aura of the Water Worm is. Right, so again, as in every preview deck, you get, uh, I believe, 5 golds, 2 legendaries, 10 basic cards, and the rest is silvers and bronzes, with total dust Vial's value of about 4,000. So let's see what we get here. Blazing Breath is basic, Dragon Nest is... I mean, this is used only in combo decks, alright? This is... some people play that in ramp, as in, you know, one mana cycle, heal for two. That's like one mana uh, Monastic Holy Water, which activates only on turn seven and later. I mean, on your mana seven and later, so PP. But yeah, we get two Lyrials, which is a staple right now, with all the neutral decks running around. Uh, Date Masamun, which is... Not bad, really, this is not a bad card, but Dragon doesn't really use it right now, but it's definitely something that can come back to meta, and I wouldn't be surprised. Then three Dragon Oracle basic card, staple card, Breath of the Salamander, really good card, definitely worth getting it. Grimir, amazing, right now, and in previous patches, and probably in next patches, his end chance is just simply insane, and when you com combine it with your ramping abilities of Dragon, it gets out of hand really quickly. Aifa, uh, I wouldn't say that it's a great card, it sees play, play in aggro decks and in OTK decks, like with the discard mechanic, OTK, but this deck is definitely too slow to play right now. It's one of the fastest OTKs, but it just doesn't have enough defensive abilities to uh, survive and cycle at the same time like, like D-Shift can. Then we have Dragon Scyther, pretty good card, I would say. Uh, I don't have non-animated copies, so I put in animated. Same for Aifa, by the way. And um, Dragon Scyther is used as a re removal in ramp decks, because it's literally 3 mana uh, destroy a minion as long as there is no taunt in play, or uh, you are targeting the taunt minion, or the ward minion. Yeah, I get a lot of hate for using Hearthstone uh, calls, I mean Hearthstone names for the abilities, but I'm working on it, guys, alright? I, I just still play Hearthstone and I have definitely more time on Hearthstone than Shadowverse. But let's not uh, digress. Then we have Pyrox and Dragon, which is kind of strange to be here, but I guess it's a silver they wanted to put from the... That's from Rise of Bahamut, I'm pretty sure, right? Uh, I can't check right now, but I'm pretty sure that's Rise of Bahamut. Then we have Rahab from Tempest of the Gods, great card, definitely. Not really played right now, because ramp decks right now are focused on ramping and late game, they completely ignore early and mid game. Cunning Wyvern, great arena card, useless in Constructed. It's the one that gives you Blazing Breath on Last Words. Well, it's a not a good card, right? It's not a good card. I mean, it's great value on arena, but not in Constructed. It's, it does literally nothing. Then we have Sybil, staple of every single Dragon deck except for Aggro. And yeah, she will be alterated again. My altar will appear in the bottom right corner now. Then we have Rough Drake. It's kind of good actually. It kind of fell out of meta. It was played more, but uh, as people realized that neutral craft uh, as the main aggro actually very often ramps uh, over the f 3 HP limit of the Rough Drake, they actually stopped playing the Rough Drake because it was never killing anything. Hippocampus, uh, kind of a meme card, I mean, a 5 mana that evolves into 7-7 seven, seven is pretty crazy, but, I mean, aside from killing uh, Lucifer with this, or Abyss, that is non-evolved, well, if Abyss is not evolved and actually attacked you, you are probably dead anyway, so you don't kill it with Hippocampus. But yeah, mm, that's probably to, to be cut out, that's just a filler bronze. 
Draconic Fervor, uh, definitely a staple card in every single Dragon deck you play three copies, and again, except for aggro. But I would say that even in neutral aggro, I would probably play Draconic Fervor, because I would still play cards like Grimnir, and this is just a great draw. It, it just offers you way too much not to play. So I would probably build uh, my Dragon uh, neutral as a mid-range deck, with something like even Bahamut, like offensive uh, aggro Alice and then Bahamut, something like that. And then we get Dragon Guard, which is a pretty good taunt, Phoenix Rider uh, Aina, which is a pretty good finisher, but uh, doesn't really compare to Forte, alright? There needs to be 4 minions on the board for her to be as strong as Forte. I guess she has more health, but then again she can be easily traded into Forte, cannot be attacked on Overflow. Then we have Lightning Blast, which got killed in some patch some time ago, I believe a month ago. So... Yeah, not really the best card right now. I would rather play the Dragon Lance, which is also a bad card. Dread Dragon, uh, also a really bad card, but can give you some nice swings, but nah, don't play it, guys. And then Odin is Ouroboros, alright? Let's open Ouroboros here. I believe that's how you type it. Yeah, I'm good at mythology. This is the Ouroboros. Deal 3 damage from Fanfare, heal for, for 3 from... Last words, and also whenever it dies, it returns to your hand. So this is a definition of infinite value. You can literally just play to deal 8... Treat it as 8 mana, uh, deal 3 damage, heal for 3. And then this spell comes back to your hand and your opponent has to deal 4 damage to it. So yeah, that, that's like... So it's basically it's deal 3 damage, heal for 3, and then... To your other target, which must be a minion, you deal 8 damage and heal your face for 3 because they have to kill Ouroboros unless they use spell. Yeah, it's kind of going there around, but I guess it's it's much simpler when you assume that Ouroboros is actually a minion. So yeah, but it's inf it's just literally infinite value. You cannot you can just play this as your single win condition, and as long as you draw it, you can win just by playing Ouroboros. You don't need anything else. Except for Ramp, of course. So yeah, uh, again, I don't have Ouroboros, so Odin is symbol for Ouroboros. Also 8 mana, also has fanfare effect, I, I think it's pretty similar. Uh, okay, so this is your deck, and how do we upgrade it? So let's not rush too much, and let's just put our basic bronzes and silvers for the start. We don't really need Aifa, we don't really need Pyrox and Dragon, we don't really need, um, let's say, Hippocampus and Cunning Wyvern. And we also don't need... Well, the rest could stay for now, alright? So first of all, what you want to play is the rest of your ramp. So we'll play Sibyl. Three copies. You need to add two legendaries. This is your first step. Add, three, add two additional Sibyls. This is a base of Dragon. You definitely want it. If you want, you can just buy this Pribble deck three times and, you know... You will get Sibyls. Then we want to add Ayela. She's uh, another ramp piece that, you know, is there for consistency. She's definitely worse than Dragon Oracle, but she's your six co your basically fourth, fifth and sixth copy of Dragon Oracle. Which is a bit worse, but it's good for consistency. Then you probably want to add more Grimniers. But let's not add golds for now, alright? Let's just focus on basics. So, I guess you could go for... We still have to add 4 cards, right? It's kind of hard to add only commons, because... Uh... Dragon is not a cheap craft, alright? Dragon is definitely not a cheap craft, but let's see, some silvers and bronze, what could we add? Uh, oh, I have a great idea what we can add. We can add a great card named Dragon Summoner. This card is simply insane. It's 2 mana, draw a card, place a minion on the board. You want to play this in every single Dragon deck. Uh, then we could, let's say, add... Well, let's probably not focus on the early game too much. We already have Lurial, Datema, Summon Dragon, Oracle, Dragon Summoner, and Breath of the Salamander. Also Blazing Breath, usable. So I would say that we don't focus on the early game. If you want, you can add in Dragonite Fist. But again, let's not focus on the early game. We have to add something better, bigger. So let's see. You could add uh, one more Aifa, to be honest. But did we not kick Aifa out? Yeah, we kicked Aifa out, so let's not use Aifa. We could add... Uh, 
a Dragon Warrior. It's a basic card, so you don't have to pay anything for it. Uh, it's not ideal to play 4 drops in Dragon, you generally want to skip four, turn 4, like play uh, Dragon Oracle on 2, and then on 4 you play only Rahab, because it's the best card on 4 that doesn't require your Evo point. There is also Siegfried, but he actually requires your opponent to have damaged minion, and because you only ramped this game, your opponent will not have a damaged minion. So generally it's triple Rahab, but as I said, let's not add uh, the golds for now. So you can probably add, let's see, Dragon Council is not bad, Fortune Hunter Fina is not bad, Groove Mountainer, this is also a pretty good card. Ideally you don't want to play 5 drops either, because you will play Draconic Fervor and Sibyl. This is what you want to play on 5, and that's usually enough. We could add Dance of Death, but you know, it's everything is unoptimal, right? So we'll probably just get the strongest minion we can get. Oh, let's also cut Lightning Blast, it's a really bad card. So I guess let's cut Lightning Blast and play Conflagration instead. It's also a base card, we can play 3 copies of it. Conflagration is really good right now in the meta, because it deals 4 damage, it kills Alice, it kills Evolve 2 drops, it kills uh, Boosted by Alice 3 drops, so it's actually a really good Conflagration. It, it's, it's a really good removal, right? It usually will kill your entire opponent board. It also kills Hector, it kills, uh, well, cards like Tov, Cards like, uh, well, maybe not Fina, maybe not uh, other strong neutral cards like Montagnard, but it's, it's still a really good card. You definitely want to play it. Probably not in three copies, but this is a good start, all right? So Ouroboros will be played. Then our next step in upgrades will be getting rid of uh, the Phoenix Rider Aina, getting rid of one Conflagration, even though we just added her, getting rid of Dread Dragon and Dragon Guard, because these are not optimal cards. We'll also, we will keep Wrath Drake for now, and I guess we will keep, uh, we'll kill the Masamon and the Real. These are not really needed. We can also kill Dragon Nest, but let's keep it for now. And now we'll add golds, alright? We'll add golds, let's not focus on legendaries yet. Golds you wanna play are Grimnir. Wait, is it not how you type that? Grim... Oh wait, because I have checked only bronze and silvers. You want to play tri triple Grimnir, you want to play triple Rahab. Again, Rahab is not really optimal in the current meta, but we are going step by step, alright? And then uh, from other golds you also want to play Breath of the Salamander. Uh, and then let's see other golds. I'm not a Dragon Specialist, alright? This is probably my worst class. So, I, I know how to play this deck, so I definitely will give you some good idea, but uh, don't don't follow me exactly, you know, card by card, because I can actually... Let's disenchant that, why not? Uh, we can play... Neptune is not a bad card, Polyphonic Roar is not a bad card, Genesis Dragon is also a pretty good card. Let's play Genesis Dragon. This will be our late game finisher, right? Alright, then... In our next step, uh, this is this is the step adding golds, alright? we If you have any of these golds, you actually want to skip part of the previous step when we added all the silvers and bronzes and add the golds uh, like at the start, alright? Alright, so this, this is the deck, guys. For now, this is, remember, Odin is equal to Ouroboros. Then on our next step, we'll get rid of Rav Drake, we'll get rid of um, Dragon Nest, and we'll add some more late game power. I will actually also cut one Genesis, because we'll add Israfil. Again, I have golds checked. We'll play double Israfil, and we'll play triple Bahamut. And we'll also cut something else, because now that you have the Bahamut, you can actually cut Conflagration. If you, if you played with Conflagration for some time, and you actually grew fond of it, and you want to keep Conflagration, you definitely can. Also, if you don't have Triple Bahamut at once, you know, you can add this step by step. By step. I also recommend you to keep Conflagration. And we also will play more Ouroboroses. Uh, let's add one Ouroboros. Again, we'll use Odin, because I don't have Ouroboroses. And as our other card, we can probably add... I actually am not sure what we are missing from like standard card, standard decks. 
I mean, we could play Sahakel, but let's not. Sahakel is kind of out of meta. Uh, if you have Neptune, if you manage to open Neptune, it is also a great uh, inclusion. Because as you can see, we don't have anything on 6 and 7. Uh, that's that's actually standard in the in the dragon decks. You rarely play anything on six and seven. So I guess you could play Forte actually. Yeah, we are playing Genesis. We should play Forte. So let's try to fit in some more Fortes. We can actually build it as a storm deck, cut Israfil and add in more Fortes. Uh, that is kind of a storm idea. You see, we have uh, Forte, we have Dragon Sighter, we have Genesis. That's a lot of storm, right? And this will be a ramp storm deck. The general idea of this deck is to ramp as quickly as possible to your higher curve and then um, and then generally use your high curve minions, right? So this will be your next step and then in your final step you want to uh, probably include Urd include Urd because Urd is a card that we forte together allows you to deal 10 damage for 2 cards you can also use Urt to give additional attack to Genesis Dragon that was already on the board. And yeah, that, that's basically what Urt does. I don't think Urt is like a must-have, but you definitely could fit it in. Where I would fit it in is probably in space of Rahab. But in the current meta, I definitely recommend playing Rahab. So this would be the this would be kind of the storm ramp deck, which would originate from uh, this pre-build deck. What you want to, like, how you get those cards is you can definitely get Forte from pre-build deck. You will get a very cool alt art Forte. You can probably also get... I, I feel like Genesis was in this pre-build deck as well. Mm, then we have... Well, everything else is pretty standard. Breath of the Salamander is included in this pre-build deck. And the rest is mostly commons and basic cards, so... Yeah. If you want to make something really expensive, you should look into uh, Sahakel Core. Oh, nope, that's a wrong mouse button. Uh, which is basically, you know, to combine it with your neutral cards. If you play Sahakel, you want to consider cards like Lucifer, which will heal you for 4 after at the end of the turn, after you Sahakel it out. You already play Bahamut, and you could also consider Israfil which would uh, basically deal 2 damage on attack to all enemy followers. So that would be your board clear or t on turn 7. But there is a lot of cutting to do if you want to play this deck. You would probably have to cut Genesis and Dark Dragon Forte. Also cards like Dragon Sighter would go away, because you, you need plenty of space for the neutral build. The advantage of this build is that if you play only neutral cards with Sahakel, you base your win condition on neutral late game legendaries, your Dragon Summoner is guaranteed to draw you either Ayala or Sibyl, because this will be the only Dragon, car uh, summon dragon followers that will be left in your decks. So you are guaranteed your PP boost, your ramp, from the Dragon Summoner on turn 2. Unless you draw another Dragon Summoner, then I guess you have to try again, right? So yeah, this is the idea of how you build your deck. Also, another uh, style of the Dragoncraft deck you could consider is Genesis Dragon with cards... You basically, you know, I will save this, I will quit this deck and I will show you this deck because uh, this is also something you could build from this deck and that is Genesis of OTK. How this deck works is you cycle a lot. Just notice this. I play triple Ivory Dragon, triple Dragon Nest, triple Summoner, triple Oracle, triple Emissary, uh, triple Goblin Mage, um, triple Draconic Fervor and then our win condition and ramp. So our win condition is Queen of the Dread Sea. You, how she works is you basically choose one neutral, one class card, and then you discard everything else, but those you chosen cost zero, so we can play them immediately. And you choose to play, of course, Genesis Dragon, which you can fetch with your Dragon Summoner, and Ariad, which you have to find on your own. And the, the plays, you play the Queen of the Dread Sea, uh, you chip down Genesis and Ariad to zero, you play Genesis, evolve it, go for nine to the face, Aria the Genesis, go for another 9 to the face, that's, 11, uh, that's 18 damage burst. That's a lot of damage, right? But you need to save your Evo till your turn 10. And the deck, well, I would say the deck is pretty consistent because you actually have so much cycle that you can just focus on early game, on ramping and removing your opponent board with cards like Blazing Breath, Dragonet Fist and Breath of the Salamander. 
And after that, you can take your sweet time to cycle when you have some big stuff on the board already, like Sybil and let's say uh, first Genesis even. Or first Ariad, you you can play one Ariad. We play two. We need only one copy. We to pl we play two to increase the chances of drawing it. And I'm pretty sure that this video is actually getting long. It's 20 minutes, so we'll cut it here. And with that said, guys, peace out. Have fun with your alt art cyber.